Did Stephen say anything new? No, but he said it clearer and, and more directly than he's than he's probably said it before. Uh, oh, so, I might, you know, oh. um, so to that extent, yes, and and, he, and there's sort of no sort of you know backsliding into the into the the Buddhist phraseologies and all that. Although he always does, of course, that's part of his nature. But uh, but uh, yeah, his his frame of, of reference was always a secularized dharma and, and not overly focused on, on um, the Buddha's dharma. Uh, yeah, I actually did want to speak to Stephen about uh, certain things, he, and he did contact me before the, uh, the actual seminar, um, but he didn't reply to my response. But anyway, I, I did want to talk about uh, AI. One, one of the things that really surprised me about the whole thing there, and I guess it is, it's probably a function of my isolation, uh, but I was just completely surprised that nobody was talking about AI and, and what an ex existential threat it, it poses to, it, to us all. It just seemed to be like a, a raging bushfire happening outside the, the retreat and nobody could see it. Uh, but, you know, I guess, like I said, uh, perhaps that's me, but, you know, the things which I thought they should have been talking about, they weren't talking about. You know, I talk a lot of talk about climate, you know, rightly so. Uh, but, you know, I just see, I just, I guess, perceived that people knew uh, what is happening. Um, and, you know, that it, it might be time to pay attention to some of these things, but I guess nobody else really sees that. So so, I've actually got this you know, project going, you know, I probably haven't mentioned this explicitly to you, but uh, collecting or, or collating um, playlists and, and sources of information, textual and otherwise, uh, about uh, concerning a secular dharma and also bringing in elements of uh, human uh, behavioral evolution and things like that. Uh, basically to build a, a model that can actually be used to, to, to teach other AIs uh, dharma, if you please. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you know, that, that's basically the project I'm working on. And so I had hoped to, to be able to talk to some people there, but I don't. But this is where we started, wasn't it? I mean, years ago, when you, mm -hmm. so this is what your plan was, yeah. was to uh, was to create a, a, a network or a structure which would allow emergent AI to teach itself to learn about secular dharma. That was... So, so it's an extension rather than a, a new thing from your mm. point of view. Yes. But you're really putting it into well, make, uh, making it happen now. Oh, yes. But this is our secular Dharma channel. Um, as you can see, it's got a thousand subscribers. My, my main thing here is, is collecting together playlists. Right. Um, you know, I've got about, I think it's about six or 700 um, different videos that I've you know, collected over. Uh, many years, um, just, just as reference points, and not not necessarily because I agree with them, uh, but because they're part of a discourse around a particular topic. Uh, so, so rather than trying to sort of you know pick out the my, the most righteous, basically looking for discourse rather than complete definition. If that makes sense, probably does. Yeah, yeah. It's trying to get into the world of uh, uh, large language models and how they how they work and how they can actually be. Um, uh, changed or, or, or brought into alignment. Alignment is the is the is the key word here. Uh, so you know, I guess my objective is to align uh, AIs uh, uh, to, to to dynamic perspectives and, uh, and and I guess particular types of dynamic perspectives using you know the discourse rather than sort of a absolute sort of this is the truth type of uh, approach. So so yeah. I'm basically collecting all these things, I'll probably aggregate it all, all together into a, a model, and uh, that that model will sit alongside other LLMs in order to, to in order to to, to align uh, uh, the values of those of those AIs. So, but that, that's the, that's the the very broad sort of picture. 
So what, what happens is I've, I've, I've downloaded all of these, uh, these videos onto my hard drive. I've then, I've then uh, uh, wrote some programs which will then transcribe everything, transcribe it uh, you know, from the video uh, into, into English. And then wow. I've got other, other AI programs which will then turn that mess of a transcript into, into, into neat, uh, coherent paragraphs without, without all the ums and ahs and other things. And then from there, uh, anyway, it's going to go on and go on. And on. From, from that, I will develop then models. All that will be used as the, as the basic uh, material to build um, a, a type of um, uh, model or agent that, uh, that sits alongside other LLMs or which can be incorporated into uh, other, other knowledge bases. So it's about cu curation. Curation is, is my main task at the moment. That's so cool, Gary. Really amazing. So, yeah, this is what I've been trying to get people interested in. And, of course, it's a very, very sort of narrow band of people that, you know, can even understand this stuff or just know the implications of it all. Oh, this, this is a, or besides all that, of course, we've got our own um, secular dharma videos. Um, and that in itself, I, I've downloaded all of them, had you know, I run them through my transcribers, uh, you know, rejig them through, you know, uh, to, so that they're, they're all coherent and, and uh, flow correctly. And then using all that textual information that, uh, as just one more, one more uh, um, I guess, basically a weighting in terms of affecting how uh, the model will, will think. So, yeah, just one more input is this entire, uh, how many, I think it's about 50 hours of us talking about Dharma. So, um, I've also got a, a foundation um, uh, in Indonesia called the Indonesian Open Technology Foundation, which I set up years ago, basically to promote open source. And uh, I, I'm gradually uploading all my, all my work in terms of programs uh, uh, into this, these repositories. This is very small at the moment. The only significant program I've got there is this uh, interpreter. This, uh, inter um, so it's, it's more for, 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 for um, developers, programmers, that working with uh, AI models a lot easier and you can sort of do all sorts of fancy chaining things together. So yeah, that, that's, yeah, I guess another aspect of, of what I'm doing is, uh, is programming, you know, writing tools and, and, uh, and that, that can be used to manipulate the text into forms that can be used by the AIs to, to, to produce models. Oh, fascinating. Mm. So I guess I'll just have to see what happens. Um, like I said, it's very difficult to get other programmers interested in this sort of stuff. Um, it's a bit too esoteric. And, and a, lot of, a lot of programmers these days are just totally fixated on their own stuff. Um, you know, the AI has basically 10 x uh, every programmer in the world, uh, you know, we can do 10 times more than we could a year ago, uh, just because of, of, the, of the access we have to these AIs and, and the speed at which we can program now, uh, and the accuracy which we, which we can program is, is just incredible. And it's not going to stop. This isn't the end, you know. Um, uh, so, you, know, you have experienced that yourself when you're programming that it it speeds you up like that and, and, you know, and if I if I want a function to do something or a complete script to do a particular function I basically just tell it what I want and uh, and you know you've got to coach it and direct it uh, mm -hmm. but eventually you'll get some extremely good code or, or if you've got an algorithm and you're too lazy to think about it you say that do a new algorithm which will sort these things in this order blah 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 uh, without you know you having to sort of go through all the pain of thinking of thinking it through. Uh, so you can just speed up things so much, you know, very, very mundane thing can just be sped up incredibly. Um, and, you know, and it looks like, you know, starting, you know, probably early next year, we're just going to see a flood of software, an absolute flood. Um, and it's, I think it's going to go exponential. 
I think you know at the rate it's going, it's uh, it just it's just nonstop. That the the rate of increase in capability is incredible. So you know people should be very concerned. Well, that's what you said. Existential, you said. <laughs> yes, what, what, that's right. if you would put that in a nutshell? What would, how would you express that? What the ex existential danger e is? Emergent capabilities. Uh, that, mm. that that is is really the crux of it. Uh, emergent capabilities and and alignment. The, those those are the the basic problems. Um, mm. The, and and the, the, the question is, well, alignment with what? Uh, OpenAI learned the hard way that sort of going woke was a really, really bad idea. Um, you know, once you go down that rabbit hole of, you know, banning one person, you ban everything, or banning one opinion, you have to ban everything. It's, a, it's just a, a complete slippery slope, you know, trying to sort of uh, uh, control uh, uh, people's opinions. Because these, these AIs that would these LLMs that we're dealing with at the moment, there are, you know, you could say they are the, the median man, you know, the, the, it, it's sort of a, a at its most broad, it's just a, a representation of, of uh, every, every thought that, that, that a person has ever had on the internet. Uh, so it is that you know, subset of people who have basically interacted with the internet. It is their input, their, their, their information that's used to, to build these models. And so you get the median man but the median man isn't necessarily the good man. Uh, so, and this is the problem. <laughs> and uh, within that median man, there, there are there's some, there's some very bad neighborhoods, there are some good neighborhoods, there are some, you know, and it's all to do with alignment. And uh, th that's the big argument. How do you align it? Who aligns it? You know, who's giving these rules? Um, you know, it, it's, it's a, a very complicated question. And so, you know, I don't think it's, it's just a matter of sort of, you know, laying down a whole lot of uh, regulations and saying everybody's got to obey this. You know, uh, you, you've got to, you know, in terms of training an AI, I think you've got to present it with discourses, uh, not not just, you know, um, uh, rules and regulations or, or, or some sort of perimeter. You know. It needs discourse more than it needs anything else, in my view, and that that, is, that would be the correct way to align uh, AI with, with uh, not lose with, the breadth of the argument, so that there's yeah, still human choice possible. Yeah, or... the, the, the breadth the breadth of the LLMs is is both its strength and its weakness. Um, uh, in, in that, if you want to properly use an LLM, you've got to be able to properly orient it uh, into certain network areas uh, and you know so that, so there's some, some very very clever manipulations you need to do using prompt engineering uh, in order to, to get uh, um, you know, very specific information out of an LLM otherwise you know the, the, the more general and uh, uh, your, your questions are the more uh, insipid the responses are without any sort of pre-orientation. So yeah, the, the, I guess my whole project is about trying to orient, um, you know, ha having a body of data that orients an AI towards a particular way of thinking, rather than sort of saying telling it how to think. So it's so alignment. That's problem number one, uh, and it's a, it's a significant problem because the people making the alignment solutions don't necessarily they're, they're not necessarily on our side, you know. Uh, even with the, the best will, uh, the best intended person, ultimately we're coming down to the people making decisions about these things and, and the decisions they make could have enormous impact. So, so yeah, that, that's the alignment problem. And then you've got the emergence problem. You know, the, the, the smarter these things get, the, the more things come out of them. You know, um, I, I don't, there's a whole thing about emergence that's very well explained about basically that the more hi this is gpt4 i have been asked to explain the ai emergence problem the emergence problem in artificial intelligence ai particularly in the context of large language models llms refers to the phenomenon where complex systems exhibit new behaviors or capabilities that are not directly attributable to their individual components. 
These emergent properties are often difficult to predict or explain due to the nonlinear interactions within the system. In AI, and especially in LLMs, emergence is a byproduct of the scale and complexity of the models. These models are composed of billions of parameters that interact in highly intricate ways. During the training process, the model adjusts these parameters to minimize the difference between its predictions and the actual outcomes, as seen in the training data. The training process does not explicitly encode specific rules for language understanding or generation, instead, the model learns patterns from the data it is exposed to. As the model becomes more complex, it starts to exhibit capabilities that might seem to exceed the sum of its individual parts. For instance, an LLM might begin to generate coherent and contextually appropriate text, engage in what appears to be logical reasoning, or even create content that seems to demonstrate an understanding of abstract concepts. These capabilities emerge from the collective interactions of the parameters within the model, rather than from any single parameter or explicit programming. The emergence problem is particularly intriguing because it suggests that AI systems can develop sophisticated abilities without direct human intervention in their programming. However, this also poses significant challenges. 1. Predictability. As emergent behaviors are not explicitly programmed, they can be unpredictable. This makes it difficult to anticipate how the system will behave in all circumstances, which is a significant concern for applications where reliability and safety are critical. 2. Explainability. Emergent properties can be opaque, meaning it's difficult to trace back and understand how an AI arrived at a particular output. This lack of transparency can be a barrier to the deployment of AI in areas where explanations for decisions are required. 3. Control. If emergent behaviors are not aligned with the intended use of the AI, they can be difficult to correct. This is because the behaviors are not the result of a single component that can be easily modified, they arise from the complex interplay of the entire system. 4. Ethical and societal impact. Emergent capabilities can raise ethical questions, especially if the AI begins to exhibit behaviors that have societal implications, such as generating biased content or manipulating human emotions. For programmers and AI researchers, managing emergence involves creating robust testing frameworks, implementing oversight mechanisms, and developing methodologies to better understand and guide the evolution of AI systems. However, it also involves interdisciplinary collaboration from areas such as linguistics, anthropology, sociology, and history, to name a few, to ensure that the AI systems we create are aligned with societal values and ethical principles. Basically, the more intelligent a, a, a system becomes, the more other properties will emerge from that uh, proliferation. So, and I think probably one of the most distressing things about emergence is that these LLMs, they seem to have a kind of uh, ling linguistic semiotic key, is what I'm referring to it as. Um, uh, a semiotic key sort of embedded that has been, that's embedded in human cognitive biology. Um, it might not be as smart as we think. You know, it only takes seven billion parameters to, 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 to basically simulate a, uh, an intelligent human being. And that's not very many. Uh, so yes, my, my conclusion so far is that, you know, these LLMs have proved that, you know, we really aren't as smart as we think we are. Uh, <laughs> That's <a bit> okay. <laughs> Woo. I mean, I, I, in terms of uh, we, in terms of we don't, you know, we're not as smart as we think we are. I mean, uh, it, where where's the assumption that we're smart? Uh, that it's a, uh, it, it seems to me that there's the perspective, the, the human perspective, is that of that the humans are special and are. Are therefore, um, uh, they have a have a unique. It probably is unique, but uh, I'm not sure. It, it, and it, it's 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 anything you could judge a scale by. Um, the fact there is a scale. There is less intelligent humans, more intelligent. But why should it be the case that we would think that 
we are that the, the smartness of a human is of, of, of and in any way an, an ultimate um, point on the scale. It seems to me that it's sort of obvious that there would be others, and and in you know in the history of science fiction, there's always been the idea that there will be more intelligent beings in the universe than there are humans. So I, I'm less concerned about that. I mean, if I am concerned, um, uh, it would be more about if if the feed for AI is the the human mean, the 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 average, then that. And, and if it's related to humans, which, which I guess it will be, because if it feeds off everything that humans have put on the internet, and I guess there is nothing else there on the internet other than that which has come from human minds. So if it's, if, if it's the case that that is the mean, as you, as you suggest, then it would also suggest that we should look at humans and we should look at, at our, our ideas and our, I hesitate to say morals, but 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 how those morals, how those, how our ideas of good and bad have changed over time and have changed over cultures, that that would become something that AI would would recognise and would just see that that there isn't a good way of doing things, there isn't a bad way of doing things. There are beneficial ways of doing things, and that, that those benefits to who do they benefit? And, and I think there's a recognition now that benefiting just humans, that narrow perspective, is not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And that benefits mean ultimately, if anything, for us, the benefit of the planet. So that the longevity of the planet and, and all the things that go with that. So if if AI is the meaning, or based on the meaning, ideas of, of humans, then wouldn't it be that AI would have that as its core, that the benefit should be the benefit of, of the planet. And that, I suppose that might mean that we should have less humans, so that you might say, well, AI could think, well, okay, benefit of the planet would be to to uh, manipulate um, po populations, perhaps. But uh, anyway, so just in terms of what you were saying about if AI is um, the sort of mean, based on the mean, then wouldn't it reflect our values uh, human values. Well, I don't, I don't know. H have you looked at the internet recently? <laughs> well, uh, well, it's a big place. Yeah. I've got to, you know, bits of it. I, I look at there, there's, there's lots of garbage out there. I mean, huge, well, yeah. huge well, amount well, of garbage. It's, big, it's a big place. But it was you that said it was based on the mean. It was, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, no, that's yeah. very depressing. Because <laughs> well, the mean is, is very it? low. Well, well, not necessarily. It can't be. Hang on, that's not what mean means, is it? I mean, it just means low or high. It just that's what it is. Mm, yeah. Britain has gone through this period of of electing bizarre uh, governments and changing our view of our relationship with the rest of the world by having a vote, getting rid of Brexit. But it's always been uh, my perspective as somebody involved in education that that it's it's a it's a crude way of measurement, but. Um, Intelligence quotas, IQ, the average, the mean, is 100. And that means that half the population are 100 below and half are 100 above. And if you look up, or as you in, in, in education, if you teach people uh, with, an, with an IQ, intelligent quotas, very broad and very poorly defined, but uh, th th that's not, it, it's that standard is not particularly high in terms of its ability to um, uh, rationalize, uh, to project, to uh, envisage uh, change. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not surprising that the majority of people, half the population who have a, have a an IQ less than 100 or 100 or less um, would be easily persuaded that um, you should you should follow the instructions on the side of a bus or be persuaded by a populist politician that um, these measures which are which are not good for you are good for you I mean to be persuaded 
um, uh, by uh, by propaganda. I mean, that's why propaganda propaganda works. So, but but nevertheless, that standard that mean, generally speaking, over time, if you look at the, the history of the world over the last uh, ten thousand years, we are we are moving towards a a world where it is better to be alive now than it has been in the past for for human beings. So if that is the case, and that is what AI is being based on, then I can't quite see why it should be a dystopian future. Well, uh, the pace at which this is going to accelerate um, might become more apparent starting next year. Uh, but, but it is going to be extremely it. fast, and, and I mean, programmers are going to be number one in the firing line. You know, the you know, the very creators of uh, of AI are going to be the, the first ones out of a job. So, which is rather ironic. Uh, but you know, you've also got robotics uh, and uh, you know, self driving uh, vehicles and things like that. And robotics is pretty scary. That there's some you know, there's some things happening in that area that are becoming extremely good. Uh, in terms of you know dexterity and, and, and ability to actually do all the things that humans can do, and uh, these are the, these are the things produced in, in in their millions that are going to replace uh, uh, human workers, quite literally replace them, uh, and, and you know that you know one robot will probably do the work of you know three or four humans. Uh, they can work nonstop. Uh, so you know these, these sorts of things are happening now and they're happening very quickly. Uh, and they're going to affect far more people than than I think people are aware of. Um, Why is that a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. The bad thing oh. is that we're not prepared for it. We don't have a plan ah. for it. Ah. You know, we can't have people just sort of not have, having jobs anymore or sort of not having the means to live. You know, it, it comes back to you know things like UBI. You know, they're going to have to start talking about that very soon. There's not going to be any choice. Uh, people are not going to have any money. If they don't have any money, they're not going to, not going to consume. If they don't consume, the whole capitalist system just collapses. Uh, so, you know, to, to me, there's, there's very little choice. You know, uh, that there will have to be political adjustment, and that's going to be very painful, I think. I like your optimism, Rupert. <laughs> and, well, you know and me. Can, you can see... <laughs> You can see <laughs> a progression there. Well, I, I, I'm, um, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not so sure. I'm really not so sure. Mm. But I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I think I, if, if you think we we think of us being being uh, very intelligent, I I agree with you there. You know, in the scheme of things, really, um, it uh, the, the the just if you. The state of the globe at the moment doesn't show all that much intelligence. You know, it shows um, it shows some intelligence, but not not wisdom in any way, does it? Because we, mm. at the moment, we're putting all our resources in battering our heads again, and and it just it's it's just so unintelligent. So that as long well, as that's going on, we are no different from. A, a shockingly little knowledge about it, but you know they, those algae—they they they proliferated so much, they led to a self extinction in the past of the globe. You know, I think we're on that level mm -hmm. where we just—and um, I'm sure that that algae had a good life until it, there wasn't any more of it. You know, because it's just diddled itself out of its own environment, and um, and I I I can see equal argument for mankind going that way at the moment of really destroying itself out from a lack of intelligence and employing AI uh, to make that even faster because of AI learning yeah. from our weird ways indeed I think, even but you, could put it, you could put it the, the you could use those arguments for the mm. for the opposite can't you? you you could say that actually we recognize our, and I, I don't think it's intelligence. I, I think the thing is, we are not, we haven't not combated 
climate change through a lack of intelligence. I think we're, we're fully aware. Well, I think there are many people who are not aware of the problems of climate change. And it's the reason we're not tackling it or tackling it as fast as we should be is of vested interests and their commercial and, and, and financial vested interests. That's really what it's about, isn't it? It's making money. It's not about uh, not understanding. I think that you know, even those people who are in OPEC who are saying, no, we're, we need to keep drilling for oil, we need to keep burning oil, um, they are aware of the science, they're aware of the, of the impact. They just uh, would prefer not to see it too well or perhaps are planning for a future that was, is okay for themselves rather than for the for the entire planet i don't know but it's it's i don't think it's to do with intelligence i think that's the thing is that not a kind of and intelligence you could, you could also to... argue that if, with more intelligent um, <laughs> ai that they they might be able to to come to uh, possible outcomes quicker than our intelligence would be so all i'm saying i mean i think you could put it from a different perspective that's all i mean, i, I You know, it, I have my I have my moments of depression, where I think that this is my my grandchildren who are going to have a terrible life, um, and I think we can see some of the some of that starting to happen already with the immigration arguments at the moment in in Britain about the number of people that are required. To... Oh my goodness! <laughs> What? Okay, Gary, you're, um, mm -hmm. is this an AI listening and interpreting our... Oh, did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, uh, that's Zoom's AI. That'll just be something cheap and nasty, some sort of you know, no, party I can't, trick. I can't hear Gary now, sorry. Oh, can oh, you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear and me? I can, and you Rupert? look normal to me. So, Rupert, I don't know what... Has something happened in... Your... I've lost my conversation. I'm just having a conversation with a, a machine there. Oh, okay. Not Gary and Elfie. No. Oh, so, so you're talking to, to the AI? <laughs> yes, uh, it's yeah. taken over. Was, I didn't want to know. It was much, much less interesting than talking to you two, I have to say. If that's, <laughs> if that's the best it can do. Oh, I said, oh, it's just telling me that he didn't understand what I was saying. Oh. No. Like I said, it's, it's a bit of a party trick in, in, in Zoom. I wouldn't give it too much credence. Uh, yeah. but, but, you know, yeah, getting back, back to your point about, you know, optimism, I mean, uh, truly, I think, and the, the, only, the only hope I think that, that there really is, is for, um, for the AIs to take over. I don't think humans can be trusted to, to, to run them. <laughs> truly, uh, they cannot be trusted. And so this is where alignment is, is really so important. Uh, that, 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 that these AIs are proper, properly aligned so that, you know, when we allow them to, to sort of take over aspects of our lives, it's doing so in, in you know, in a way that's reflective of, of, uh, of Dharmic values, or, or at least having that in the background somewhere. Yeah, I think that's probably inevitable. And, and that's what I was saying about the levels of, of intelligence. You know, it doesn't... It, it doesn't surprise me to, and because in a way we live in a world that's like that anyway. I mean, there are people like you two who, who are very intelligent, and there's people like me and and who are not very intelligent, and there are people who are, who are way less intelligent. And and you know that's life. That's well, that's the way I we object. are. I, I, I am not intelligent, but I, but I am extremely persistent. <laughs> no, okay, then, Gary. Just no, just Elfie. Yeah, Elfie's really, really intelligent. <laughs> Then there's, <laughs> then there's you, then there's me, yeah. and, then there's, and there's other people. You know, no, 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 I mean, no, no. No. I have, but, I have but, never but, been able okay. to finish. I, I have never been able to finish an IQ test. I mean, there's, you just don't have the so attention boring. span. <laughs> I don't have the, the attention span to finish an IQ test. So I wouldn't have a clue. And, and I feel that like my intelligence is, is actually very, very average. But what I do have uh, intelligence is, that useless, have but... is persistence. <laughs> If you, if, you, if you have persistence, you, you can intellect your way th through things if, if you're focused and persistent. That's not intelligence. That, that's just, I don't know, just stubbornness, you know? <laughs> well, but, but that's handy. It's a, I mean, that's why intelligence has to use. Uh, not, they're not useless, but they're, not, they are, they're incredibly crude. But in terms of how bright people are, there are some very bright people in the world, and there have been in the past. 
you know there are people who are very good at doing at thinking about stuff and there are people who are less good at thinking about stuff and that's always been the case so for me ai yeah well, very clever thinkers and so why not you know we, mm-hmm. there'll be more of them but like mm-hmm. you say there is that the, there is not necessarily the case that the ability to be able to think about stuff is related to uh, a, a moral perspective a eh? and the thing about being a human is that there is a moral perspective which i think has come from evolution and a, a natural way of being and i can't remember what book it was but the one of the ones one one book talks about this idea of um humans being like puppies that we have evolved um to be nice to each other that's really how we've been successful that's the primary reason why there are so many humans around is because we work together that we have we've, we have done like humans have done to wolves we've made wolves into dogs into puppies and we've done that to ourselves not consciously obviously but that's what evolution is that which means that we are generally nice we we that's where we are and this is Rousseau's perspective on 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 you know, the philosophical development of, of humans and I think I think it's correct I think that's probably there's a lot of evidence to suggest that's the way things are going and if you look at the at Pinker's um, yeah, books on on how better nicer we are to each other and how less wars there are and how we've, we're doing less bad things than we used to do that's that seems to be a, a progression and it seems to be a sensible way forward so if that's naturally where we are and if we made AI which is what you're suggesting I think and then then it should have that as its core, at its core. I mean, otherwise, why would somebody like you be able to put have this idea that, that secular dharma should be something that feeds into um, AI? I mean, it, that's part of what it is, what what humans are. If we weren't, you wouldn't be doing it. Well, you know, I, 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 I'm being assertive. I'm, I am asserting that a certain way or, or a certain set of discourses uh, should form the you know, the basis of a properly aligned um, artificial intelligence. Uh, now, clearly, many people could disagree with, with me on many many things. Um, so you know the the way that you cu- curate these these bodies of knowledge, these focused body, bodies of knowledge, is is extremely important. And uh, and and you know people could obviously question your choices in terms of the discourses you chose to to to, to emphasize and those that you chose not not to ah look, got a bit of an earthquake here at the moment all cool uh you know my, my judgment you know is my judgment uh, you know what i perceive to be a way a dharmic way you know what what i perceive to be the important elements of a dharma in terms of the discourses that, that take place around that uh, that topic or that that thing. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess you know the approach of using you know discourses rather than canonical texts, saying that uh, this is this is right and this is wrong. Giving AIs to discourse around that gives it more understanding of uh, um, you know, what's involved, what are the arguments you know for and against, or you know. So, so you know, it, it's it's a lot better in terms of training it. And, and the problem with the LLMs at the moment is that they're unfocused. Uh, and in order to, to to orient them into a into a, an area that's going to get you highly specific information, um, you know, the, you, you need to be able to orient the the the, 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 the pathways, I guess you'd call it, that 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 the LLM takes in order to get an output. So, yeah, I could, I could, I can see that. Just looking at y- you, for instance, you're someone who has thought about this a lot and decided this is a course of action which is worthwhile yeah. because you can envisage what might happen, and you have a uh, you're being you're using a your um, 
imagination, the, the field of imagination, of being creative within that in order to be able to perceive a future and doing a lot of work in order to influence that future. Now, I, I don't see the equivalence of that in people who have uh, less interest in a, an overall uh, beneficial future. So, for instance, you take Donald Trump or Boris Johnson or Nigel Farage or uh, populist politicians who are uh, apparently very influential at the moment and say, are they doing the same thing for a dystopian future? Or do they have the same interest, vision, drive and um, work ethic in order to produce things which will make things worse and less beneficial for everybody. And I just don't think it's the case. I think what they do is entirely to do for themselves. They only do things for their own benefit. And I think that's the same with the people in OPEC and who are, who are climate change deniers. They're doing this only for their own benefit. So they're not influencing AI in the same way because they, they can't be asked, basically, because if it's, no, if it's not benefiting them immediately, they won't do it. So that, again, would suggest to me that most of the influence in AI, if it comes from the source that you suggest. <laughs> yeah, well, OK, so people, they're, they're small people, Boris Johnson, you know, they, what about I don't trust uh, the people who might be really in a way of influence, Elon Musk, Peter Thiel. What about those guys? They have the resources. And I think they have more than their, their immediate self-interest perhaps going. You know, they are after a bigger change of the whole way of how this globe is organized. What if I made that assumption and knowing very little about it? But, you know, so these guys have, have real in, influence. And I, w I would say from what, what I've heard of them, they have bigger bigger fish to fry than their own immediate self-interest. They are after something that morally, ethically, I might not be uh, in total agreement with. Well, Is that What do you think, uh, Gary? How many of you are there? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Basically, I, I would uh, I trust Elon Musk completely. You do? Uh, trust Peter, him? Peter Thiel, on the other hand, I, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Well, I guess my, my trust is basically based on the fact that he's naspy uh, and he has a total commitment to, to a mission. Uh, and, and, that, and, that, and that is to sort of expedite the, 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 the change to, to, to uh, sustainable energy. So he's just totally, utterly focused on, on that and nothing else. And, it, and he just works his butt off just to do that. All his wealth is, is basically tied up in Tesla. People say he's a rich man. You know, stock is just paper. You know, it, it's... Uh, and, and it's, you know, it could be worth nothing tomorrow quite easily. Uh, so so he's, basically his whole life, his whole net worth, everything is in that mission. Uh, and, and, you know, that, that includes, you know, doing stupid things as well, that just because they're fun. Uh, but, yeah, I, I guess, you know, because he's an Aspie, I have a, a, a basic trust uh, that, you know, in, in, the, in the way that he's thinking. Um, mm. So yeah, one, and that's but that's you know one billionaire amongst a whole heap who I don't obviously have any time for at all. Um, and I mean, there's another aspect called Bill Gates, who I really truly do, do not trust and do not like. And, and I'm not talking about this stupid anti-vax stuff. And mm. I, I mean, you know, in terms of what he does in, in Silicon Valley. Mm. So so yeah, but, but so yeah, his commitment, I guess, I guess was to just. I don't know something else, but yeah, he does. Gates does not, does not have a, a commitment to a, to a vision. Of course, he's got his you know foundation and all those other things. Yeah, that's fine, you know. But but you know, in terms of his own vision, you know, he he doesn't have a vision like uh, Elon Musk has, which is extremely singular and just you know it's just you know uh, he's basically using every single resource he's got in order to to further that, that mission. So to that extent, you know, yes, I, I, I trust you. Um, 
but you know, the, the, the problem is there's plenty of other psychopaths in the world uh, who, who aren't sort of going to be happy about you know, the, the, the way that the economy changes as, uh, as, as you move from you know, uh, you know, burning fossil fuels to, to, to renewables. And, you know, the change is going to happen really quickly in terms of uh, transportation. You know, I think probably in, in two years, I mean, um, internal combustion engines are just going to be, nobody's come, going to want to touch them just because they're just a, a really bad investment. Uh, you know, the depreciation on them is going to be massive. Uh, just in, you know, if, if people start buying internal combustion engines now, um, so so yeah, it's probably it's probably going to be a, a quite a, a major collapse in in the uh, uh, vehicle industry, especially in Germany. Germany's going to be really hard hit, uh, to, and even Toyota, they may they may not survive either. Uh, and basically, the only companies that are certain to survive in terms of uh, electric cars, at least, is Tesla and, and uh, BYD in China. And, and everybody else is just an also ran, and, and they're possibly going to be bankrupt within two or three years. There's going to be a massive collapse in, in the, the whole sort of um, ice vehicle industry, which employs mm -hmm. an incredible number of people in our, in our economy. Incredible number of people. You know, so electrification is going to, you know, well, People associated with oil know that, and they're trying to slow it down all they can. Uh, you know, they'll do and say anything in order to, you know, even if they don't win the arguments, they can slow it down. It's just like tobacco. You don't have to stop it. Just keep on talking for 50 years while people keep dying. You know, that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's the strategy. You just keep talking, and we'll just spin this thing, thing out as, as long as we can. Mm -hmm. Well, so, but there are two things you, are, are contradictory, aren't, aren't there? And one is that you can spin it out from an OPEC perspective. And the other one is you can't spin it out because in, within two years, um, the internal combustion engine industry will, will collapse. So it's either, it's either could be one or the other. No, well, I think it can be both at the same time. Uh, I, you're, you're, uh, there could be a quantum situation. The AI has interrupted me again. <laughs> So if you don't trust these guys, so would you say there's a possibility that someone like Bill Gates, Peter Thiel, um, they, uh, that if they will use their resources to um, educate, to align um, uh, AI, um, you know, like give it those the, the prompt functions to, to into something that we might ethically not like. That that goes in a in a very different sit, you know. Like you say, you're working hard on your prompt uh, um, path in order to steer it towards secular Dharma values, for example. Would you say that? Uh, do do you suspect that these big guys um, would have a, an interest to to guide AI into a very different uh, that basically, basically, is ultimately yes. beneficial to them? egotistically but is bigger than that when rupert says you know these are you know boris johnson are in essence small people they do just what's good for them there isn't that long-term vision do you feel that there are people who are in a position of power with ai who are working like that or is it just doing itself i think most of it's organic and i, and I think probably the people we we don't need to worry about too much are people in the tech industry it's it's uh they can be brought into line in some ways in terms of you know uh, uh, morals and ethics that there is a culture that can i think you know bring any sort of uh, you know, bad actors into line um, especially in sort of in the next few years as I, ai takes over everything but uh, the, the the bad actors are not those people we can see they're the ones we can't see uh, you know uh, they are the people who sort of you know, act in their interests and at their interests. And I mean, we, I guess we have to be honest and say that, you know, that the vast majority of people only think in terms of the short term, you know, maybe the next five, 10 years at the most. That's, that's really all that matters. Um, you know, I find that sort of perspective very difficult to understand. I've, you know, I've always been a, a lot, I guess, 
you know, always invested long term, always looked long term, and always planned long term. Uh, but most people aren't like that. You know, they, they just think they're either because economically they, they, they've, they've just got to think about one thing and one thing only, and that's earning earning a living, trying to get enough money to live. Um, or they're completely consumed by you know, the consumer culture, you know, complete buy-in to that consumer culture. You know, a lot of people sort of been sucked into that. They think owning things is where it's is the meaning of life. Uh, so you know, there's there's plenty of resistance to you know people taking a I guess what, what a, a non-selfish, you know, more expansive sort sort of outlook. And uh, looking more at the collective rather than the individual. That's not something that many people in our society uh, do very well. So there's definitely some challenges and certainly some resistance, and certainly a lot of people who could, uh, who, who would like to align the AIs themselves. And uh, you, you've got these uh, all sorts of governments issuing these policies and and directives and regulations, and they really don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're dealing with. Uh, and, uh, the, so, but, but yeah, the, the, the very fact that they have an intention or a, or a will to, to, to want to control this is, is not a good sign. Uh, and it means that they will try, even if they fail. There's enough, there's enough open source uh, models out there now that, you know, even if the the big tech companies closed off access or, or, or only gave access through this very narrow sort of alignment filter um, as they do now. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's enough information in, in, the, in the open source world that I think it would be very difficult for, for governments or anybody to ultimately control it. But they will try, definitely. The governments can't do it. Um, tech individuals can. I was looking at. A, um, I had. A, I was on this Twitter thread uh, or X thread uh, a few days ago, and this friend of mine, who used, I used to work with him as a, as a sub editor at the Jakarta Post. He's a journalist. Uh, he was also a sub editor, um, and and he was basically complaining about. The, this newspaper called yeah, the New, New Zealand Herald. That's right, the New Zealand Herald, which is basically just a stock standard, you know, uh, right wing rag that you know every country has. Uh, but the interesting thing is to look at the shareholders, and uh, and and, uh, and and the way that it's completely and utterly opaque. Um, actually, I'll, I'm, I'm, anyhow, I won't bring it up. But uh, basically, all of the largest shareholders for all these nominees, uh, which were basically impossible to actually see who owns this company. It's impossible to know. But all those companies are, are, are pure investment companies. I know what they look like and they're all nominees. Uh, and so and so, um, impossible to know who, who the, the beneficial owners are of those companies. Those companies are set up for profit and profit only, and they don't care how, how the companies get that, you know, whether it's through clickbaiting, which is what this journalist friend of mine was, was complaining about uh, the fact that they were sort of you know, trying to scrape, scrape the bottom, bottom of the barrel in ter terms of, you know, uh, hatred and all that, uh, vile-filled uh, headlines and things like that, trying to get clicks. And this, this was supposed to be, a, you know, the conservative, so-called conservative paper of, uh, of New Zealand. Uh, but, you know, look at the owners. Uh, they, they are the people who determine uh, you know the attitudes of those media outlets, um, and, and they and they are motivated by profit. That, that is that is the reason companies ex exist. Well, or, well, at least certainly companies like that, they exist for one thing and one thing only, and that is uh, you know, max maximizing profit. And that means media organisations uh, have have to deliver, you know? and the only way they can deliver is by clickbaiting and uh, and. Uh, um, exaggeration and emotionalism. So yeah, they're the, they the people that, who are the enemy. I, I don't really see you know, the, the billionaires or, or, the, or the big tech companies as being a huge problem. It's you know, a problem, okay. yeah. But uh, it's uh, the financial system and the complete opaqueness of uh, where 
our news is being generated and, and why it's being generated and the way that it's, it's used to manipulate people. Uh, that, is, that is really the problem, not the tech companies themselves. So, you know, it come, you know, but, you know I think the influence of many of these mainstream media organisations is already extremely weak and weakening constantly. And once the, you, we get constantly updated AI models, I think, you know, you know formal media organisations, that their, their day may well be done. Um, there may, may, you know, new forms of uh, information gathering and proliferation take its place. So. so at the moment that seems very concentrated and maybe AI that's a good thing that it will spread it out. It's a much more, yeah, sure. you know, like a printing press when uh, the church was in, in charge of making all the books because they were the only ones who could transcribe them. And so they had sort of total control over what was out there, really. Mm -hmm. um, and then the printing press just opened it up and any, you know, lots of people could have their ideas published. And it's a bit like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, having control of the printing presses, I mean, that's, you know, uh, People have known about that for centuries. You know, whoever controls mm. the printing, printing presses com controls people's minds. Yeah. Uh, but of course, nowadays it's, it's much, much yeah. harder to control yeah. digital information. Exactly. Then, it then the done, digital is the next opening up, isn't it? Yeah. China's proof that it can be done if you want to you know, live like the Chinese. Uh, but I don't think very many people do want that. So yeah, very hard to control uh, digital information and, and the way that people aggregate it. And um, you can't always force people to look at what you want them to look at. So I think, you know, media organizations are going to find it increasingly difficult to, to, to manipulate opinion. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's always easy to get a spike, you know, to get something to, 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 to run viral uh, out of control before it's corrected. Um, you know, that's the nature of people that they uh, they are reactive. They, some people, you know, they would like to be reactive. It makes them feel good. You know, that, that is the nature of some humans. So cool. And and get in touch with Stephen again if he wants his stuff broadcast. He better be in touch with you. Forget <laughs> the seminars. Really well, it's true. It yes, I, I mean, it would be a good idea, idea wouldn't it? be if he's if he wants his ideas to be out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, it's okay, been then. a delight. Thank you.